They say that money makes the world go round. And silly me, I thought it was the conservation of angular momentum. But what do I know? Anyway, when we talk about money and world, we have to be conscious there are different currencies around the world and that when we're doing business with other countries and we're traveling to other countries, these currencies are not valued the same. So if I wanted to travel to Europe that uh, has the Euro, and I'm Canadian and we have the loonie, because there's a picture of a loon on it, I have to know the conversion factor or exchange rate between the loonie and the Euro. And it's not one to one, that would be too easy. Right now it's about one and a half loonies for every Euro. So in order for me to get one Euro, I've got to spend about $1.50 Canadian. And that's the exchange rate or the conversion factor. So let's say I travel to Europe and I'm coming back and I've managed to keep 345 euros and I want to convert this into Canadian dollars. I would use this conversion factor and a conversion ratio in order to figure that out. So the way that I'm going to set up my conversion ratio is I'm going to put my known relationship, that is my conversion factor, in the denominator. So I have one and a half Canadian dollars for every euro. Now above the euro, I'm going to keep all my euros on the same side, on the same column if you like. I'm going to put the amount of euros that I have, 345. And then I'm going to figure out how much Canadian this would be equal to. So the way that you can set this up is that one and a half Canadian is equal to one euro. So 345 euro is equal to, well, we're going to figure that out. So notice here that I have an equal sign. So anything that I do to one side, I sort of have to do to the other. Or we can use the idea of cross multiplying. Ultimately, what's going to happen is I'm going to have 345 euros multiplied by 1.5 Canadian divided by 1 euros. Notice what happens to my euros. They are both now, one in the numerator, one in the denominator. They divide out and I'm left with the number of Canadian dollars that I'm going to be able to receive upon my return. And it turns out I'm going to be able to get just over $500 Canadian because I understand the conversion factor and how to use it in a conversion ratio to figure out how I get from one unit to the other. Now, what does this have to do with chemistry? Well, it's got to do with our friend the mole. The common currency in chemistry is the mole. You can almost never go wrong by converting whatever value you've been given into moles. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to try and establish conversion factors based on the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation in order to convert from the moles of one substance to the moles of another substance in a chemical reaction. But in order to do this, we have to have the balanced chemical equation first. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have the decomposition of potassium chlorate into potassium chloride and oxygen. And we can see that the mole ratio of the coefficients is 2 to 2 to 3. Now the way we can communicate this is 2 moles of potassium chlorate decomposed to form 2 moles of potassium chloride and 3 moles of oxygen gas. And this ratio is going to be maintained for this particular chemical reaction. Now it's unlikely that we are going to be using exactly 2 moles of potassium chlorate. But this ratio still has to be maintained. So for example, if we have 0.24 moles of potassium chlorate, we're going to see that we're going to produce 0.24 moles of potassium chloride. But it's not so easy to try and immediately figure out how many moles of oxygen gas we're going to get. So we have to use this conversion factor. That is, I know that 2 moles of potassium chloride are going to produce 3 moles of oxygen gas. Or, another way of saying that is that there's going to be one and a half times as much oxygen gas produced as there is potassium chloride used up. That's that 2 to 3 ratio. So let's do a conversion similar to our currency conversion by setting up our conversion ratio. And we can see here that I'm going to set up in the denominator on the bottom the established ratio from the balanced chemical equation using the coefficients. 3 moles of my unknown oxygen gas to 2 moles of my known the potassium chlorate. And then up above in the numerator, I'm going to set my 0.24 moles of potassium chlorate and try and figure out how many moles of oxygen gas are going to be produced here. So again, on the bottom, I know that 3 moles of my unknown produce 2 moles of my known. And if I have 0.24 moles of my known, how much unknown am I going to produce? 
So in going through this calculation, again, I can take the denominator of the three moles, move it up either through cross multiplication or by multiplying both sides to eliminate three moles, however it is you want to solve this equation. Ultimately, we get now three moles up in the numerator. We multiply it by 0.24 and divide by two moles. And what we're going to get is a value of 0.36 moles of oxygen. And notice that two to two to three is the same as 0.24 to 0.24 to 0.36. So hopefully after watching this video, you have a better idea as to how to set up these conversion ratios using known conversion factors and how to set up mole ratios and solve for unknown molar values from known molar values. Thanks for watching.